All right, what's up and welcome to the channel. My name is Hagshot and thank you for joining us today. We're gonna be doing a review on this 2012 V-Rod Muscle totally different than any other Harley out there. And these things have a, an amazing cult following. And I wanna tell you about this one in particular. I had a friend, uh, let me borrow it for this review. I'm gonna tell you everything I know about it. We're gonna ride it a little bit. And I'm just gonna tell you how I like it. They started production on these things in 2001. Mrs. Hexshot's gonna show you throughout the bike here. But in 2001 to 2017, this one, like I said, is a 2012. They've made some changes along the way, but basically what you see is what it is. Now, of course, this is an aftermarket exhaust. Um, loud, sounds great, but I really don't like the position of it because it's right there on your legs. Uh, but it looks good and it sounds good. So you have a 60 degree liquid cooled V-twin, all right? 1,250 cc's. All right, so it's like 122 horsepower and 86 foot pounds of torque. You have this kind of exoskeleton that runs along. So this external frame, uh, five gallon tank. It does come with a passenger setup as well. I don't know how much your passenger is really gonna like you after extended use, but let's be honest, this bike really is not for road trips. It is for bike nights. Uh, maybe going back and forth to work, some commuting, and having some fun on and getting up to speed super quick. That's what this bike is really for. You got a 240 millimeter tire in the rear, super wide tire. Um, and then you have integrated tail lights and brake uh, signals here in the back with this chopped fender um, and the side license plate, of course. Um, this one right here, obviously, this has the 10-year uh, anniversary uh, timing cover right there. Forward controls. So, obviously, you have your passenger foot pegs here. These look like just basic, like, iron 883 pegs. All right, so seating position. I'm 5'7", five, 5'8", five, on a good day with a good set of boots on. But I can flat foot this, this, this bike, no problem. Actually, the only problem I have is actually this exhaust on the right-hand side. But again, it is what it is. Um, but the seating position is actually not bad here. The forward controls are pretty, they're very far forward. I mean, I feel like for this bike, you would almost want them to be maybe about right here. So you have what I feel like is maybe a little bit more control when I get on the bike. Uh, maybe it'll be a little bit different, but they do feel very far forward considering you have these aggressive style, um, almost drag bars on this thing. Um, you're almost in like, a, the letter C positioning to be, <laughs> yeah, I feel like the letter C when I ride this. So it's pretty, pretty interesting as far as the seating position, the kickstand and everything is easily accessible. Yeah, so you can see how the exhaust right here. Now, if I was taller, maybe I could do something like that. But even then, it's just right there on, on, on your leg. Now the standard exhaust has a two into one into two. So the pipes are coming out of uh, either side of that rear tire. Uh, which is what I would probably prefer, but they actually had to redo this uh, for him because the, the, the case here, the timing case and everything is a little bit different. He actually made it, I think, for maybe one of the earlier V-Rods, but on this second gen, this case was different, so he had to redo it for him, but he, but he looked out for him there. So here's the, here's the instrumentation right here. So here's the instrumentation right here. Pretty simple. You have your RPM gauge over here. You have, of course, your speedometer in the middle, and then you have your fuel gauge over here. See where that thing redlines at? Almost nine grand, um, or right at nine grand as far as redlining. So that's pretty amazing for a Harley Davidson. And then, of course, you have your high beam, low beam turn signals. Turn signals, of course, are on uh, either side, either handlebar, which is great, like just like a traditional Harley. ABS, Brembo brakes, and all of that good stuff there. So. Uh, very much needed whenever you're up to speed on this thing. You can see it. It says 150. I don't know uh, exactly how fast it would go. And then, of course, you have your ignition right here. So you can turn it off or you can turn your accessory on. And it's got a barrel key um, uh, for your security there. Little windscreen here in the front. And the LED light um, was changed to some kind of aftermarket. Inverted front forks and chopped fender. Yes. And then you have integrated uh mirror lights and as far as i know this is the first harley to ever come with the integrated uh mirrors from the factory which is a pretty cool thing you can see your uh your liquid your oil cooler and all of that there in the front everything kind of has this it's not really chrome i think they actually call it like a platinum finish um 
Some of it's chrome, some of it's like this brush type of aluminum look, which I really like, like over here on the horn cover, on top of the rocker boxes, and all of that good stuff. So, okay, lock the truck. Take this bad boy out. 122 horsepower. It's definitely more, more ponies than the uh, than my street glide. That's for sure. It's a different looking bike, man, and I, I can't wait to get on it, and try it out. Let's see how it does. Hopefully traffic has died down just enough. You see your swing arm right there. Um, yeah, it's 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 for sure good looking if you're into the muscle bike kind of thing. Well y'all can hear me. This exhaust is loud. Yeah, you can see it right there. Because of the angle, eh, it is what it is. It feels super wide, so taking like uh, doing U-turns and stuff, I'm not sure how much I'd like that. You can hear that exhaust. is loud and proud dude holy crap I like it though bike feels pretty easy to maneuver yeah not too bad Admittedly, I have some back issues, man, so I know this would not be my kind of bike. But again, for what he wanted, coming from sport bikes and, and having that enjoyment out of sport bikes, but he knew he wanted something American-made and a muscle bike, the fastest, the fastest Harley that he could get. That's what he wanted. And that's what's cool about the V-Rod, man, even though it's not for me. Harley does something like this, like this bike, or the FXDR, or anything like that, the traditionalists typically get kind of upset. It's not a Harley, it's not this, but from their perspective, from Harley's perspective, it can't be like everything else they've ever done. Because it's just, you gotta bring in new people. It, you just have to, you have to evolve. And um, that's what this bike is able to do. You can see your instrumentation here very simple which is totally fine that's fine uh, keyless ignition really so you have the barrel lock so you can unlock the ignition and then from there you open this thing up a little bit then from there obviously you can uh, um, from there you can turn it to accessory or turn the ignition on finding neutral is actually this is the easiest bike in Harley's lineup so far that I've uh, had finding neutral. Once we get up here, we can kind of open it up a little bit more. He's got these Willie G uh, handlebar grips, which I, I love the Willie G collection. Um, they are not, uh, they're not heated or anything like that, but, uh, I do like the, uh, the grips he has on here. Oh yeah, I can feel that exhaust. Woo. Like it 
likes being in these this higher I mean I'm not even revving high RPMs to be honest with you we'll get a chance to open it up right here in just a minute coming to a stop it feels very well balanced doesn't feel too heavy it's like 677 pounds so it is not a lightweight motorcycle but it does not feel heavy at all either which is great indicator or anything like that the instrumentation and everything is very limited so you know it's just it is what it is obviously has the Bronx that eventually is going to come out so they're always kind of trying this but if you want something used and something kind of special this V-Ride may be a good fit for you shifting and everything feels very smooth it's not really clunky kind of like you know how you can hear a Harley uh, when you shift it this one feels very smooth it feels very european metric bike type uh if you will uh, which i guess in large part it really is try these uh brakes out here not too bad we're good 
Yeah, the bike's super comfortable, man. If you're if you're a smaller person or, you know, like I said, you like that sport bike type of thing like this, this it's not too heavy. You know, a lot of Harleys, especially coming from a sport bike, a smaller bike, whatever, they feel too heavy. This one doesn't. think if you're uh, you know it, it's not traditional Harley but it still has that same kind of sound that potato 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 you can hear it it still has some of that don't like these foot pegs though I'm glad they're a little further back than what a normal v-rod would be but I can't imagine them being out any further not at my height five seven five eight on a good day with spacers and the right boots I may be five eight uh, but yeah, that, that, that would not be great for me. All right, so there you go, the V-Rod. To me, bikes like the V-Rod and the FXDR are cool because they bring different people into Harley-Davidson and into cruisers and heck, even maybe into motorcycles. So for that reason alone, I really love the bikes. Um, I think it brings more people from the sport bike world into the cruiser world and into Harley Davidson specifically, which is super important to the motor company as a whole. So I appreciate this bike for what it is. I, I'll say it one more time. I hate those freaking pipes. I love the way they sound. I hate the position of them. It's, it's terrible, but that's just my opinion. So it is what it is there. The V-Rod is a cool bike, man. It's a, it's a, it's a staple. It's like the the um, it's like the redheaded stepchild in the Harley world. Maybe not so much anymore with the FXDR because that one may be even a little bit more hated. But guys, you have to understand Harley Davidson has to continue to evolve. They can't. They're, they're going to continue to with the touring bikes and their bread and butter. They're going to continue that, but they have to try new things too and continue to evolve with the times to stay relevant and to stay around. And that's something we definitely all need and want is to Harley Davidson to stay around and continue to be successful. So there you go. Let me know what your thoughts are down in the comments below. Thank you so much for watching. Make sure you subscribe and all that good stuff. And as always, hold the rubber side down.